Thank you, Laura. And um, I, you know, I, I hope that you're that you will not let this season, uh, this moment, in the the life of our church go unnoticed in your hearts and minds. My point is that God is doing something with us. He's doing something in us. Uh, he's doing something for us, and we're a part of that. Uh, when we come together as church and support uh, each other in church and support our ministries and support the mission of the church, we make God's plan for us a reality. But without support, without being here, without presence, um, I'm not sure how we're going to live out God's plan for our family, our church family. So that's a big part. Everything that uh, Laura had mentioned is a big part of uh, uh, this week's readings and this morning's message. This morning, I simply want to share uh, with you uh, one thought as it relates to why is it important for you to be a part of a church family. Uh, that's really the only question I want to look at this morning, and I want to briefly give you um, three points to think of this morning in addition to the readings uh, that we had this week about why it's important for you to be a part of a church family. Now there are several reasons why it's important, but this morning I want to give three. The first is that it moves you, um, us, being a part of a church family will move you out of self-centered living. It moves us beyond ourselves and allows us and encourages us to be a part of a family, to be a part of each other. Um, I really enjoyed uh, this week's readings. Uh, a couple of the quotes that I enjoyed, especially the one um, that John Wesley, that he, he used of John Wesley. The Bible knows nothing about solitary religion. This is Wesley. The Bible knows nothing about solitary religion. And for Wesley, remember, religion is defined as loving God and loving neighbor. Uh, it's the very heart of uh, Christianity. So when he says the Bible knows nothing about solitary religion, he's saying that the Bible knows nothing about growing in faith, being what God wants you to be all by yourself. It doesn't speak of that. This, this happens in community. It happens in the body. It happens as we're a part of God's people. Um, I also liked um, Woody Allen's quote, and I use this one. We talked about this one in Sunday school or our small group this morning. 80% of success, I don't know if you caught that one this week, 80% of success is showing up. It's just being where you're supposed to be. Now, I don't know about the other veterans, but a, I mean, a, a motto that we had to live by in the Navy was be where you're supposed to be, when you're supposed to be there, in the uniform you're supposed to be in. If you do that, 90% of your work's done. Be where you're supposed to be, when you're supposed to be there. That's what we're talking about, presence. Now, I have been working on, the office has been working on our membership. And I knew coming in, uh, some of you that have looked at the books have said, you know, we, we know we've got um, a little work to do. We know we've got uh, some more cleaning to do with, with our books. We've, we are in much better shape than we have been, and we are, absolutely. Our membership... <clears throat> is somewhere between 360 and 400. We're, again, because we haven't finished fixing and polishing everything and checking. We have two books, is, so we're, we're bouncing. You know, we've got to verify all the names. We're somewhere between 360 and 400. Now, we have an average uh, this year of 110 uh, Sunday mornings. So 25% of us are here 
when we're supposed to be. Now, just do this with me. Imagine for a second you're coaching a team. 25% of your players show up to play. How do, you, how do you coach? What plays do you run? What are you going to cut? What are you not going to do? Imagine you own a business and 25% of your employees show up. What do you do? How do you work with that? Imagine you're a teacher. A lot of us are teachers. 25% of your students show up. What do you do? One of the goals I have as your pastor this next year, 2015, is to work on that percent. 25, roughly, roughly 25% of us are where we're supposed to be when we're supposed to be there. We're present. I'd like to see that number grow. And I'm going to be asking for your help to make that happen. But I cannot imagine how we are going to live into the future God has for us if we're not present. I just don't see how that's possible. How do we live into next year without saying we need all of our family here? We need more of our family here because, as Laura said, the more that's here, the more we support each other, the more lifted up we are. Um, it's just better all around. So one of the goals I have, other than, than cleaning up and organizing and getting that fixed, is to fix that number. We need more of our family with us. And I'll be asking for your help to make that happen. But... One of the reasons we need to be a part of a church family is because it moves us from just living life on our own and doing our own thing. The Bible knows nothing of doing it on your own. Second, um, being a part of a church family helps us develop our spiritual gift. Rarely. I mean, you, there's a lot you can do on your own. A lot of study, a lot of... Uh, a, a lot of knowledge you can gain on your own. And you can even serve and volunteer on your own. But rarely, very rarely, will you be able to find and develop your gift without your brother or sister in Christ. Because this is where God gives it. This is where it's, it's initiated. And this is where you begin to work it out. And develop that spiritual muscle, that gift that God, that the Holy Spirit has given to you. I have been um, pleased um, with the response from uh, those that I'm already receiving calls from. Many of you, as you're reading through this book, um, something's hitting you or something uh, moves from your mind to your heart and it gets stuck in your heart and when it gets there, some of you are picking up the phone and calling me. I appreciate that. Um, I have heard from some of our, our family members who have said this was last week when they should have been working on presents, said, I, I, I got to tell you, I'm still stuck on prayer. And as we talked, it was, I'm not, I'm not stuck on a particular lesson. It just hit me so deep, and it's impacted me in such a way that I feel like uh, that portion of my life has hit a new gear. Well, that's awesome. That's exactly what's supposed to happen. Um, I've heard from others who said, you know, this, this thing is set up so smooth and so simple, and it's really, I enjoy the readings, and it, it is making sense to me. I now understand a little more about prayer, and I understand a little more about presence. Well, it's wonderful. Without coming together and being a part of this campaign, I doubt we would be where we are. But where we are... And the goal of where we're wanting to be is one, one more step, just to grow in faith. That happens when we're together, when we do things together as a family. 
So why do we need a church family? Why do we need a local church? Well, um, Rick Warren asked this question. He says, why is it that people need to join a church? What is this thing all about? His question was, why is it important to join the local church family? And his answer, because it proves that you are committed to your spiritual brother and sister in reality, not just in theory. And that's the third point. That we, being a part of a church family, commits us to God's family. It doesn't just commit us to a church. The church is the body of Christ. I mean, if, if you're committed to that body, then you're committed to God's family. So there's a lot of reasons why we ought to be a part of the church, but one of the most important, I think, is because it, it tells the world that we believe in this stuff, not just in theory, but in reality. It identifies us as a member of God's family. Now, there's a, um, there's a, a video um, illustration of this uh, that I wanted to share. The title of this video is What's in a Chair? This church has chairs, but just imagine where you're sitting. Imagine the pew. What's, what's in a pew? What's in a This week's theme was presence, being here. 80% of success is just being here. Imagine if, if just 20% more of our folks were here. We would be 20% more into living out God's plan for our future. As we continue to move through this campaign, I hope that you'll continue to pray and be present. Next week, or really this week, as we move into it, we move into the gifts portion of our membership vows to support the church with our prayers, our presence, and our gifts. What does that mean? What does that include? What does it mean to support the church, to support God with our gifts? This week, uh, we'll learn uh, through the readings some of what that means, and next Sunday we'll come back. I hope you're a part of a group. If you're not, uh, you're welcome to join uh, one of the groups that we've got. 
uh, going on through uh, our Sunday school rooms. Um, and then uh, next Sunday we'll have a special uh, speaker that's going to help us figure out and work through what is it about gifts that we tend to be afraid of. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, and Lord, we ask that you would be with us uh, this week as we continue to move through this uh, stewardship campaign, looking at your people and all the many ways in which we might live into our calling and our giftedness. Lord, be with us this week. We pray now for all of those that will be reading and following along with this um, in the readings as we move through this next topic. Lord, thank you and be with uh, our church family, all of our family members, as we grow together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.